normal characters can play downfall runs. There it is, okay. Um, yeah, so someone had an interesting idea. What if we just tried playing a regular character on the downfall map? How that would kind of look. Yeah, the downfall characters are stronger than the base characters on average. But what about the run itself? What about the gameplay itself? Is that, you know, already privileged in a sense? Because I think it very well could be. Max HP for a rare card? Yeah, I would say probably. And I like how the patron is still the heart. So I was actually, and that's the first thing that came to my mind, was you could just recall at the start right and then break the key later and gain a strength so all of a sudden something like limit break is a lot more t that's really funny because that was actually on my mind as something that <laughs> ironclad could do right because the deal with downfall pathing is that it's a lot nicer on average than a base game once you kind of know what's going on after act one is pretty much strictly positive to go to events. Some events are even more rewarding than elite fights. There are events that'll give you two relics and a hundred gold and all kinds of stuff. So, um, so I already like this. I like how this is starting out and we don't even have to do that. But if we get the icky event, then it's very possible. I'm looking at this, this three elites. So something like that. It just depends on if we get gold or not here. But that's funny. All right, let's hop straight into it. Hop straight in with the recall and then try to break the key down here. In that case, maybe less likely we go to the shop if that's actually something that we're interested in doing. <laughs> like, yeah, limit break is not good to start out with, but once you pay a hundred gold and break your key, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden limit break is doing something. Okay, Jawworm, if you say so. I know, I started out with the limit break. It's not, there's a HP tax for doing something like that. Headbutt, uh, it does something. You know, maybe we can get to a point where we upgrade limit break and then we can play it and then headbutt it and gain strength faster. There's also flex, flex for the limit break. <laughs> That's a little bit janky, but yeah, that does exist. This isn't a downfall exclusive event, but nonetheless still a very good one. If you can go to a shop, because 275 gold is insane. Yeah. And take a little bit of damage. Got no problem with that. Um, I kind of think that this is defend here. I mean, you're really counting on drawing a third attack right here. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, that's more along the lines of what I think would happen. I don't know. I guess it was better to strike again there, huh? Oh well. Twin strike to dump our strength twice. <laughs> Once we get there, assuming we don't die. I don't think we'll die. We're ironclad. We got burning blood. Ironclad knows his stuff. Ironclad has intention. Um... I mean, maybe you're supposed to defend and headbutt the defend or whatever. Yeah, I think we're okay. I don't want to headbutt anything. Maybe it's better to defend there. Because drawing limit break means that there's less chance you draw regret. Yeah. Oh well. 2 HP. I'll take it. Like, it would have been better to draw a limit break there than regret, so maybe you just keep bludgeon. Heavy blade for the limit break strength. Nah, I think I want the bludgeon. Just reliable. Get some. Hit some hard. I trust it. Medkit. 
Yeah, why not? This is defect, right? Okay. And defect gives you voids, so maybe... You know, maybe medkit makes us happy. There's also a blood potion, which could definitely get used. It's also in flame. So now our limit break is doing something now, which is nice. <laughs> and we are definitely interested in removing regret, and I think I'll buy blood potion just for good measure. Battle trance possible, headbutt something, battle trance back into it, yep. Yeah. I think what we did is okay. Hopefully we have enough money to remove, or excuse me, to uh, <laughs> break the key up here. Bludgeon. 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 No! <laughs> no! It's supposed to be bludgeon. I don't even think it matters what you had, but here. And that's why we bought this, though. Bonk. Supply scroll. <laughs> we'll see what shenanigans can be done with this, because with Dark Embrace or Feel No Pain, this relic all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of evolved with the med kit. I guess that's fine. kind of a weird combination kind of makes sense but evolve is kind of telling you hey drawing status cards is good mech it's kind of saying get rid of your status cards whenever you play a status card exhausted i trust evolve it'll come up against sentries it'll come up against the effect it'll come up um and it's like <laughs> automaton plays into status stuff a lot you know I kind of would critique automaton on the basis of profiting off of status cards is a really powerful thing to enable yourself to do and the response to that might be along the lines of I think we'll key that there's no shop in sight um, a criticism of that might be hey you know what, Ironclad's got Evolve, so Ironclad's profiting off the of status stuff. Well, Evolve Plus? That's, that's not OP. Well, the thing is, is that... Look at Ironclad's card pool. And look at his base kit. Like, Ironclad's a pretty... Uh, weak character when compared to downfall... Stuff. You know, this is a desirable damage common to take on floor 1 for Ironclad. And it's like... <laughs> That's just not something that someone like Automaton would want to take. Automaton's got a lot better stuff to do. On top of the fact that he's got ways to kind of utilize and mobilize status cards. So, this is also not takeable all the time on Ironclad. There are some times when you don't want Evolve, where taking this instead of doing something else could be making you weaker. And, you know, like, we just fought Gremlin Knob and killed him. Now we take this, because it'll be relatively free to set up against Lagavulin. And it will be good against Sentries. But if you fought Sentries or Laga and then took this, then drafting this could be the reason why you don't draw Bludgeon and you die to Gremlin Knob. Does that make sense? So, this is one of the most powerful things Ironclad can do, and he still can't do it all the time. And... To Compensate it's to compensate for the fact that he really doesn't have like you've got some strength stuff, yeah. And you've got exhaust energies, like Ironclad's power cards are very strong, but you can't just willy-nilly add them into the deck all the time, like with some modded characters anyway. Kind of a pointless rant to go on, but you're welcome. Get drop the supply scroll. Yeah, so like this is a really good relic. I think it's kind of understated how good supply scroll is. That's a very useful uh, thing to be able to do. <laughs> you know, that's impactful. Let's not understate that. It's probably worth just 
going ahead and getting rid of Limit Break, huh? Oh, I forgot that we had Inflame in play. I did that backwards, but it looks like it didn't matter too much. Yeah, I guess you just bludgeon him. It actually didn't matter at all. <laughs> Never punished. Toy Ornithopter, and that's why you hold off on taking Blood Potion there. You understand? Magic Flower, Toy Ornithopter type of reasons. Reckless Charge with the Evolve and with the Med Kit. Reckless Charge is a promising card to add. It also could be played on the same turn as Bludgeon. Zero Cost Attack card. I like Reckless Charge in situations like this. I have a soft spot for it. I do think I want to go this way. Okay. Okay. So be it. I just hope we have enough gold to break the key still. Give me that 10 damage. <laughs> Maybe you need to upgrade Limit Break to have a scaling solution to rare cards. I feel like the merchant fights have a higher chance to give you a rare card. Is that just me? I feel like they do. You know, you start out the run sometimes and go to an early shop and you get offered a rare card. Does that happen to anyone else but me? I want offering. Barricade is nice, but... It's expensive, like we got bludgeon and barricade. I kind of want offering. I put some offering back into it. We got toy ornithopter for a little bit of extra sustain. Rest in peace to that, rest in peace to lantern. There's nothing super exciting here. And maybe you could buy fire potion if you want. Once again, trying to show up at this fire with 100 gold to break red key. So I'll just move along. Bonk. Liquid Bronze. Think I will pass on those cards. Okay. Um. Huh. All right. Well. Okay then. Um. I guess. I guess. So this all gets rid of Mad Gremlin. I guess. Get him out. Ancient potion's nice. Power through, yeah, with the med kit and with the evolve. Yes. Yes, indeed. Gorgeous. <laughs> Perfect. Do you just rest here? Maybe this is a rest never die scenario. But Limit Break could really use an upgrade. And we have Ornithopter. I want to upgrade Limit Break because I want that to be the win condition right now. You know, we just scale up our strength. This doesn't exhaust. There's also this, which could very well be upgraded, but it doesn't seem super relevant at the moment. 
Um, there's also this. And this. I kind of want Limit Break to not exhaust. <laughs> but maybe it's too early to plan it for that. I doubt it. I think that this could come up against the effect. Yeah, now you could headbutt it back if you wanted. <laughs> I think it makes a ton more sense to have power through, though. No need to exhaust those if we're going to get Evolve in play. I almost want to take one of these. 60% chance to be dropped a potion, and it also heals us. I kind of want to just take Ancient Potion. Or Thorn Pot. It's hard to say which one matters more right now. Yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah. I should have took Thorn Pot probably. But is this fight really gonna last more than three turns? Like, are we gonna experience the vulnerable at all? Like, we got Supply Scroll and. I don't feel bad. Reckless Charge, Headbutt, Reckless Charge? I don't know about that. Maybe it's fine. Bash bludgeon just it? That's it? Even limit break bash twin strike strike seems like that would be it. Strike dummy, that's nice. Pizzazz potion, so 10 vigor. Feel no pain. Yes. Take a potion for Ornithopter's sake. I like Pizzazz Potion. Keep Thorns next act for, like, birds or... Book of Stabbing. Just in case we dropped a potion. I think it's probably worth it. Bloodletting? Yeah, we got Bludgeon and we got Card Draw. Blood lit, and we also have sustain. All right, I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick, but yeah, this is kind of shaping up how I thought it would. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit uh jaded that there weren't any downfall events going on here, really. <laughs> I think I made the point about getting a strength being kind of impactful. Starting out with limit break on the first floor is pretty funny. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that in the standard run, but since you can gain a strength in downfall just by going to fire, you know, maybe next act there will be more shenanigans with events like uh, the Augmenter, you get mutagens and transform to and uh, a card reward and a hundred gold and but yeah, I'll be right back. And I want to do downfall characters in a regular run too. Oh, alright, we're there. That's right, no fire. That's right. I don't know if we want to do that just yet. Probably want to evolve and play first. Gotta take off the buffer, of course. Of course. Take off the buffer. Energy Thief. Whenever Defect generates a void, it goes to the top of the draw pile. And we'll be able to exhaust it, and we will draw a card for drawing it, because... Oh, we have Field Pain with Supply Scroll. Yeah, because of Evolve, because of the powers that Ironclad has, and is entitled to, because that is how he was designed. That's right. Yeah, I called that. I called that.
may as well just keep these and the void exhaust at the end of the turn or we can exhaust it but either way we say thank you defect you limit break here I think I want to attack. Yeah. I mean, you could elixir these. So, we have strike dummy and eight strength. So that's doing 19 damage twice. But defect's gonna game block here shout outs to toy ornithopter shout outs to toy ornithopter energy potion that's nice reaper yes <laughs> I mean so we have strike dummy so Pandora's box is a little bit worse Dome is probably fine, like, dome is probably takeable, but people hate dome. And, I mean, this is a powerful deck. With that now, especially, and we have good relics. We gotta evolve and feel no pain and inflame. I kinda just wanna rock black star. <laughs> Alright. Four elites, and the Slay the Spire Watcher character is here want to take events kind of yeah look for stuff like augmenter that's the main one i want to see because i think that event would be insane right now especially on ironclad go ahead and break the sapphire key gain 10 max hp because <laughs> fires are good you know fires are just good probably upgrade evolve yeah seems to be the most impactful one right now Got a fire here. Event here. <laughs> Although getting the super elite out of the way with three elites, that's also an idea. Nah. I want to take four elites though, because we got Black Star. But I don't know if it's very possible. But we have a Reaper. Oh, and these guys don't rob us. That's right. <laughs> um. Well, once again, we have Reaper. That's kind of the deal. We have a Supply Scroll next turn. Burning Pact is good, man, but is it too early? We got a Bloodletting. I almost think it's too early. We're on three energy and didn't remove any of our base cards yet. Warcry Plus, on the other hand, is strictly positive here. And we've got an Evolve Plus, so we could like put a status in there. Top deck of status with power through, draw more cards. That with, I think it's Warcry Plus. It seems... Yeah, that seems like it's just doing more right now. But I do like that Burning Pact. Duplicate two cards for a random curse. <laughs> Duplicator Shrine is a thing in the game, but that's the downfall option that's added. I mean, just duplicate Reaper and Offering. Could duplicate a ton of stuff. You could duplicate this. I want to do two cards, but I wish we had taken the Burning Pack now. Could exhaust the curse. So we're kind of just stuck with the curse. But what curse are we really upset about? Regret? Normality. I mean, we can play three cards on a turn. Bludgeon pass. 
I don't mind normality all that much right now. And we can diverge and remove the curse there if we want. I want to duplicate too. And I want it to be Reaper and Offering. <laughs> Just to like speed through the deck, get to Limit Break, get to Reaper faster. And we have Ornithopter after all. Parasite? Okay. I mean, I'll take a Parasite for duplicating two cards, you know. I got no problem with that. Do you even play Offering here? You could just power through Reaper. There's an idea for you. Is that crazy? Just power through Reaper? What's the worst that could happen? Interesting. Okay, there it is. We don't have feel no pain. But we have a second Reaper. Maybe you could bloodletting bash. This round's down, right? I don't know if it matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's no point in even doing that right now. I mean, headbutt a strike, really? It's a bunch of defense when snake plant's not attacking. Put the days back on top, draw for evolve, draw for evolve again. Okay. Neither Reaper. But it's not worth trying to block that anyway. Whatever. Alright, here we go. Jeez, man. Limit break, headbutt, limit break. And what? We don't have evolve though. But it's okay because we have feel no pain and make it. I don't know if I'm trying to play reckless charge right now.
It does more damage to play three strikes than to play bludgeon. Got two reapers in there. And this is gonna exhaust. I mean, if Gremlin Leader summons, then we want a Reaper for next turn. Just call it at that. So do we try to get rid of this guy? That seems, you know, that seems too good. Yeah. No, bro. You serious? <laughs> yeah, we have to just take that. All right. You say so. Red candle. So we'll be applying soul burn for each of our attacks. Slime soup with the exhaust synergy, of course. The prepare card. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the burning pack plus the letter opener to go with the war cry and the burning pack plus. And what do we have here? Blood let and upgrade. There's also feel no pain. There's also Legend. 10 damage upgrade there. Hmm. I kind of want to do end flame, you know? Just get strength scaling even faster, bro. There's also bloodlight. Bloodlighting doesn't really need to upgrade right now. Then again, nothing really does. And we're going to begin the next elite fight with our prepare card that costs zero. There's also this. Which is gonna come up, you know? I feel like I wanna do Feel No Pain, that's gonna come up. I don't think Bludgeon's really ever gonna get played here, right? It's just not. We'll do it that way. The Prepare is an amazing card, actually. Like, Prepare is kind of overpowered. I don't really know how it hasn't been looked at, to be honest with you. And we just get a zero cost one. We don't have uh, feel no pain in play.
Not bad at all. Akabeko, bottled lightning? I don't even think we need shrug. Um, bottle of offering. Yeah, seems good. How about that? Lose 50 souls, heal 37 HP, forgotten altar event. 50 souls for a 37 HP heal in the middle of Act 2. Yeah. Or you could take the event, uh, the option that normally you have to take. Wow, or you can just leave. <laughs> Man. You know, this is kind of a tough one because everyone hates Forgotten Altar event. <sighs> Excuse me. Everyone hates Forgotten Altar event. And it's something that drove me crazy when playing this game is taking some aggressive path and you got Black Star or whatever and then you have to just lose a bunch of HP or take a curse. But man, you're giving the player the option to lose their money. 50 souls for, you know, for basically like a 50% heal. Or you could just leave. I think that's crazy. You could just say, no, I'm good, and then leave. I mean... That's 50 souls, but, like, who cares, right? Because it's healing to full. I, I feel like either of those are totally acceptable right now. But both of them are good. Both of them are certainly better than taking a curse. It might not be necessary, but I kind of feel like just being at full HP for 50 gold. Even if we open hand Reaper. All of a sudden, you know, Reaper's alive. Oh, Akabeko Twin Strike? With the Soul Burn application, of course. And a little bit of letter opener. And then a little bit of Headbutt Twin Strike. want to get to that limit break. No! Still? Oh, we got another one. How much harm could it do? Red Candle, I think, is extremely unbalanced. Like, that's kind of a crazy buff to give yourself. Whoa, whoa, hold on now, hold on now. Hold on now, that's not right. That's not right. I don't want to lose the Ornithopter value, but... Man. About to just gamble brew this away? Or we could just take this damage, like. Maybe that's fine. Right, limit break, defend twice. Take 30 damage. Maybe you could headbutt Reaper, burning packed into it. But this deck is a little bit bloated. In any case, I'm gonna do that. 38 damage. Yeah, so I mean, we could just headbutt Reaper. Seems fine. Maybe you could play power through too. It's not ideal, but you know we got Gamble Brew. And got another potion. Bottled flame, I don't know about. Bottled whirlwind with the Akabeko, huh? If you want to do that, you can. You can also bottle twin strike. I really don't see anything here to bottle flame, sadly. But you could take Whirlwind and Bottle Flame it with the Akabeko. 
But then I'd really appreciate if this could be upgraded, but it's not going to get upgraded. And then it's 8 by, you know, it says 13. And then with our one strength, that'll be 14 by 3, 42 to everyone. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we really need it, but yeah. Boot and Bottle Flame are two of the worst relics we could get, so. But Bottling Twin Strike is probably totally fine, really. You know, with Doc Becco, it's one cost 34. So. Yeah. And there's also Akabeka Reaper as well. And maybe you could have bottled a Reaper. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally reasonable as well. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't just do that. <laughs> Duplicate two cards for a curse. To be honest, that shrine event, you know, it should just be. It should be duplicate one card for a curse. That's what it should have been to begin with. I have no idea why it's a free duplicate to begin with. Like, that's a really powerful thing to do. All right, no secondary reaper then. So be it. I think I'll pass on those and let us go for our last elite. Got the inflame limit break. Twin strike. But yeah, like, Ironclad is not stronger than these other characters. But here we are. Doing just fine. You know? I don't really think it matters if you play the wards or not. Sundial and bag of preparation and a shockwave plus. All right. And our potion chance is still. Oh man. Oh man, this hand. I guess there were ways to heal more there. Oh, th that was also lethal damage. But there's another Reaper in here. Tick up Sundial a little bit. We're not in a rush. Fear Potion over these. 
don't know, artifact could be relevant for Watcher, right? Or for this, Hex, if we needed it to be, but we don't need it to be because we got Evolve. I don't know, I kind of like that bottled Twin Strike. Seems fine. Yeah, I guess vice just over. We don't get Sundial Region Potion. Seeing red. Seeing red's probably fine. It's probably totally okay. Like another bloodletting, another offering. We got Yeah, screw me. We got back a prep sundial type of stuff. And region potion over these. I don't know, we heal so much, but is artifact really gonna come up? I don't know. Twin strike and then headbutt limit break. That boot value. Oh, we don't have Evolve in play right now? Huh. The Watcher loses 150 more HP apply minus strength to her when she just divinity or plays Ragnarok. Man, I just don't understand these downfall players' perceptions of the base game characters. They make no sense. Is that fair to say that they don't make any sense? It's like ironclads with the fortification and whatnot. Like, how hard was it to put together an idea of ironclad with barricade and with demon form? You know, the characters in this game are... They have a lot of flavor behind them to begin with already. So it's a little... You know... Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why you would need to make stuff up. <laughs> Probably could have waited, ticked up Sundial a little bit more. Another limit break. Immolate seems pretty reasonable. We got two Reapers. I don't know. I think this deck is pretty intentional about what it's doing right now. How about that? Gain energy and add a slime to your discard pile at the start of your turn. But guess what? The slime does a good thing after all. <laughs> and if it weren't, well, I mean, Med Kit is kind of useless with slime, but yeah. I mean, why not, right? You got Pyramid too, but who needs it? There is Empty Cage and Pyramid to help you play into Sundial stuff more, but... Dude, we're gonna be drawing two cards whenever we draw a status card. <laughs> and when we exhaust it, we gain block. So might as well. Might as well. 
super elite fight. And then we can break the key right there. Fantastic. Want to go to a shop. And it's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah. Okay, there wasn't a four elite path. That's good. It makes it feel better. Yeah, I do want to take the events too, but I'm a little upset we didn't get Augmenter last time. There's also this. I mean, that's got an event. Now let's go. Let's see if we can't kill the merchant here. With our prepare card. And our soul burn application. Feel no pain or... I don't even care about getting feel no pain in play, dude. I don't even care about blocking. I just want to damage him. Just get him out. So we could headbutt a slime and draw extra cards because of it. Not even close to being able to kill him. That's a lie. We're very close. Letter opener. It's just the soul burns detonating now, so we need to make sure our output is really good. No twin strike here. No limit break here. But we also have gamble brew. This is pretty much our chance to oh yeah, wait, never mind, he's vulnerable. <laughs> Thanks for the three hundred something souls. Paper frog gemstone gun sounds insane here. Prepare crush. Evil within. For our boss card purposes. And then we could dual wield them if we get our hands on dual wield. This seems amazing, but it's expensive. Paper Frog also, like, we have a Shockwave Plus that we were just given out of the blue. We need to have 100 gold by that point. That shouldn't be too hard to get. Gain a card with retained exhaust and each chosen gem socketed. Card draw or energy? We have bloodletting and sundial. I want to take the course. Oh. And temporary strength for our limit break. How about that? So we just get a zero cost retainable card that is going to draw two cards and give us two temporary strength. And now we have paper frog. <laughs> and I'm just going to hope we have 100 gold at this point. Like we really should have 100 gold by that point, you know?
Just end the fight now, that's fine. I don't care about being at full HP. We have a burning pact, I don't know if we need true grit. And we'll need to upgrade it. Brew a sharpness that has 25 counter? Sure. We have a bottle offering. That's right. I forgot about that. That is bottled. I don't even think I want that. I don't want to turn ourselves off from drawing right now. So, oh, that's so unfortunate, actually. Because this option right here, you just give up your one strength that you start out with, and uh, your 10 max HP, and the one dexterity that comes with the elite, and then you upgrade all your cards. But we don't really even need to upgrade all our cards anyway, but still, I mean, Rare Relic is totally, you know, it's totally fine. I don't know if I'm ready to take <laughs> two normalities. But yeah, that event lets you just upgrade all your cards. <laughs> Pretty standard ironclad deck overall. Nothing super radical. <laughs> Tori. Gain two strength and two dexterity. Add two burn plus cards to your draw pile. No thanks. That sounds like one of the worst effects I could ever, ever want. Even with an evolve plus. That sounds like, uh, and even with a limit break, yeah, two burn plus, no thanks. No thanks. In the base game, that's how Hexaghost would imagine killing you, is by giving you burn plus in your discard pile. But this puts him in your draw pile, which is even worse. So, two burn plus. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. The Mind Bloom audio bug exists. Got a, oh, whoops. I just moved my entire desk. Yeah. So we gotta save and reload. Nunchaku. Yeah, we'll have a hundred gold to break the key here. Transform three? It's not even two cards, it's transform three. That's insane! It really is. It really, really is. I just transform a strike into an evolve. Very good. Let's do it again. Transform strike into wild strike for the synergy with evolve. Now let's transform a defend for good measure. Oh, emulate. Oh, transform. Okay, so just transform two strikes and a defend into evolve, wild strike, and emulate. And now we have a pain. Which, whatever. We can exhaust it or just, you know, remove it last act if we need to. Transform three is crazy, bro. That's crazy. How are you going to allow a player to transform three? I mean, wow. Okay, so there's a pain right here. Well, oh no, what am I gonna do? <laughs> like, are you serious?
We're shockwave. You know, it just feels more and more to me like... I, I don't know, dude. I'm just getting this vibe. Just getting this vibe that... The downfall people... Just decided... That balance was no longer anything that they cared about. I really do. I get this feeling that they said, you know what? Balance is not the important thing about this mod. It's more to just do with making sure that everyone's having a good time. That's the impression that I am getting from the people in charge. I'm also getting the impression that the people in charge are simply not playing their mod or testing it all that much, to be completely honest. Which is fine, like, you know, everyone's got stuff that they need to be doing and obligations and all of that. I get it. But... Yeah, like, I don't know. That's all. That's all I guess I could really say on it. Tori, by the way. Self-forming clay. So the pain is a good thing. So we need not worry. Shrug it off with sundial. You could start doing some sort of stuff. You got burning packed for that kind of thing, I think. I really don't think we need shrug. But you could headbutt something and shrug it off back into it, like it's fine. Deck is just getting pretty big as is. But yeah, I don't know, maybe the average person just isn't experiencing what I'm experiencing when playing this mod. So now we game block next turn because of the pain with self forming clay. Duplicate two cards, Offering and Reaper. I don't think that there's a curse I wouldn't take to be able to do that. That makes sense. You know, like, that's just... <laughs> that's a big buff. Counter Potion I am not a big fan of at all. And... Repto Master, huh? If only we had transformed three cards and were able to see and emulate. You know? mind that dude. Dude can hang around. Yeah, maybe block potion there. But also maybe limit break reaper heal to full. That's also maybe. Reapers in there. <laughs> Damn. 
thanks for the heals. But yeah, this is some of the stuff, like, what I'm doing right now, this is some of the strongest stuff Ironclad can do. Bottling this Evolve Plus, by the way. <laughs> bottle Lightning, Bottle Flame, and Bottle Tornado? Unstoppable. But what I'm doing right now is legit some of the strongest stuff that Ironclad could ever hope to do. And... Like, I don't know. I just... Just from what I'm seeing them say online, the downfall people... I get this vibe that... They're more focused on making it work... Than... They really are on balance. Maybe it's just that I play this game a lot. Like, I have a lot of hours in this game, so... Seeing stuff like... Transform three cards for a curse, that's insane. Like, that's an insane buff to receive on one floor. That's essentially a boss relic that you're obtaining. Yeah, you get a curse, but what if you just have, like, Omomori or something? You're getting a boss relic. And what if you just remove the curse? What if the curse doesn't even matter? Well, what if the curse does matter? Um, you're transforming three cards, dude. Or, okay, you don't want the curse, you're too scared, then just transform one. That's still a good floor. You know? Like... I don't know. Or that. I don't feel like we need this upgraded since we have prep bag. I'm gonna just do the second feel no pain. <laughs> bottle flame, bottle tornado. Need Dark Embrace. And then we'll really be moving. And hey, you know, they must think it's okay. Downfall people must think it's okay. Because it's still the way it is, right? Tungsten Rod Calipers. <laughs> no, Tungsten Rod Pain turns off self-forming clay, but that's okay. Second Bludgeon? I think I'll pass. Body Slam with the Calipers? Maybe. I mean, you might as well. But our damage output is uh, godlike, so we really don't need a Body Slam. But this is kind of a... Uh... Yeah, so we don't even take damage from the pain now. But this really does... You know, this is kind of eye-opening. It is, in a certain sense. Because... Yeah, this was a pretty powerful Ironclad run. But the number of win conditions that we suddenly have available to us in this run is just kind of remarkable to me. With the calipers, nothing stopping you. Nothing stopping you. Now, in all fairness, I do like this fight. I do like Bag of Knives here. It's just also something that... Doesn't make a lot of sense, though. Really, if you think about it. <laughs> if you actually think about it, it doesn't really make any sense. The Bag of Knives buff. Now, silent... I don't know, silent? That's just not something that silent has. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, if we're being honest. They couldn't think of anything for her? It's like defect. 
basically is just copying Automaton's ability in the Act 2 fight. And I don't remember what Act 3 defect is about right now, but yeah, like these characters are just, they're, they have a lot of depth to them. They have a lot going for them as is. I don't think, no, oh, whatever. Like, I can't... I don't know what I would suggest, it's just... Yeah. Oh no, she gets two more shivs. It's like I saw that they're going to be giving... Hermit in Act 3 for the boss for Downfall. They're gonna be giving him... Um, this new kind of a move set, but really what they're just doing is they're just making it so Hermit drinks a cultist potion at the start of the fight. That's all they're doing. And I see people saying, oh wow, that's going to be hard. I see people saying that. Like, oh no, that Hermit's going to be really scary. Why would they do that? And they're being serious about it, and I'm just reading that, like... They're giving Act 3 Hermit a cultist potion at the start of the fight? Why? Not in the aspect of why that sounds like it's gonna be OP, but in the aspect of why, who cares? Like, why don't you just make the character more accurate to what they are? Like, why don't you... Why is Ironclad Act 3? boss wise why does the boss in downfall ironclad ironclad the boss in downfall in act three you know what i'm talking about act three ironclad why does he have a fortification it doesn't even make any sense he's fighting with the spire shield why why don't you just give him barricade in demon form you just give him barricade straight up turn one he plays barricade turn two he plays demon form and then turn three, he's like playing impervious and then exhuming impervious. And then, you know, why don't you just... Ironclad's got a lot that he can do. You don't have to make stuff up about what he can do. You don't have to make up a boss. He's got all the tools that make him scary enough. It's kind of insulting to Ironclad and what he stands for. When you just undermine all of his abilities like that. And say no. Ironclad will begin the fight with a fortification, and each turn the fortification is up, and such and such, like... Reinventing the wheel here. You know, it's like when I was young and I was trying to play chess, and I wanted to play with all kinds of funny new rules. You know, that's kind of what it feels like to me. That's, the, that's what is comparable to me. Tori Tungsten Rod, yeah. And so, his artifacts just get burned because whenever we play an attack, we apply soul burn to an enemy. <laughs> Yeah, like, you guys have done something great here. It's just... It's just I'm not seeing... Why it's being maintained the way it is. That's all. Or why it's being... Modified. Uh, into the way it is now. 
course, it's a mod to begin with, but... I don't know, I think I'm making sense. I think I make sense. Transform 3. And this run is long too, and I feel like I haven't... You know, this run would be... Probably an hour. Maybe less. Almost certainly less. If it was a standard game, but downfall runs just take longer on average. I don't really know the reason for that. Maybe it has to do with merchant. It's probably like a bunch of things, but one of the things is gonna be merchant. Ah, right. Right. But the real way to test this is probably... ...to use a downfall character in a base run, in a standard run. But I don't even know if I can do that. Because the standard run is gonna have a bunch of the... Crazy downfall events in it still. There's probably a way to turn that off. I hope there is. Some of the events are good ideas, dude, but... When you make all the events really, really good... Oh, transform all cards in hand into random status cards. Oh, is that a bad thing? Nope, looks like probably a good thing, right? Like, suddenly some curses are really good, suddenly some boss relics that are supposed to have a downside have a strict upside. Stuff like that. You know, the events are just... And this also is going to exhaust all of these, right? That's how it works. Yeah, like, Silent's getting Wraith form here, in this fight. Yeah. Yeah, that should be a thing that happens in the Act 3 Silent. Like, we just fought that Silent, and she's gonna gain an extra shift if we play a card that costs two? Dude, Silent should be, like, <laughs> nightmaring Wraith form, and... I don't know. That sounds pretty awful, actually, but you see what I'm saying, right? I just don't see it. I just don't get it. Why it is the way it is. Because the characters have a lot going for them. And... It'd just be cool to actually feel like I'm fighting that character. That's all. Lizard tail. Just in case. Just in case we needed a barricade, it's there. Which we didn't, because we have calipers, but I'll just take it anyway. Finesse. Could take a card remove here. I kind of want to just buy liquid memories or flex potion. Get us a second potion. I mean, we legit just don't need to remove our curses. And... I trust liquid memories. Quite possibly. There's also this. There's also this. I mean, do we really need three Feel No Pain plus? Right? Like, 
Is 11 block per card exhausted not enough? It needs to be 12. <laughs> yeah, I'll just take barricade upgrade. But yeah, this is like one of the strongest ironclad runs I might have had. <laughs> Look at the number of rare relics. Look at just how... I mean, yeah, it was a black star from Act 1, but this did really nice. This... This was, you know, there for us. And like, I guess it's fun, so whatever, right? You know, just whatever. Because it's fun, so who cares, but... But it's only fun for so long. Once you realize how easy it is, it becomes a little bit less fun. That's all. Your wins become a little bit less novel. This is the same reason why uh, the community might not want to play Watcher all that much. Even though some people like Watcher, they love her, they love playing her. Average player is probably going to say that they love playing Watcher. But a player who's played Watcher enough is probably done playing Watcher. Or is just trying to prove something for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, so I kind of want to just gamble brew this away. So that our cards don't get randomized. And that's the thing is that if you die here, I feel like there's not that many reasons that you can die. Aside from something like like that you know aside from something like that where the final boss just has to give you absolutely terrible RNG with drawing two bewildered in the same hand and then your cards get randomized all to cost three and then that's how they kill you because that's the only way they can that's the only way that you could possibly die at this point. Because all the pathing choices that you make are good. All the pathing choices are good. There's not a bad way to approach it. We already have so many statuses in there. Our hand's gonna be full. I don't know. Like, you guys worked really hard on this of just letting you know that people like it a lot and then they play it for more than one run because they like it. And then when you play it for more than one run, five runs, ten runs, of whatever characters, apparently, as we see here, it's like suddenly. 
It just kind of comes to you and you go, oh. Everything I do is good for me. <laughs> everything I do is good for me. Go to a fire, even though we don't really need to upgrade something. No problem. Get recall out of the way. Next time we go to a fire, we break the key. Or we can break the key now. Which key do we want? Well, it depends on what buff we want. Doesn't matter because any of the buffs is good. Okay. Well, let's go to an event and transform three cards. Let's go to an event and get mutagens, transform two, get a card reward, get 100 gold. Let's go to an event and have a choice between if we want to get cloak clasp, if we want to get wrist blade, or if we want to get champion's belt. Let's go to an event and then we get 100 gold here 275 gold there i know regret shrine is actually in the game so there's that but that was not changed at all it's like whatever you do is good because the events are always good shops are always good even if you have no gold because you still get a card reward and then uh yeah fires are good no matter what hallway fights are hallway fights they're there but yeah, and elite fights are elite fights. If you have some incentive to kill elites, then you have incentive to kill elites. Like Black Star or the Relic that gives you a strength whenever... The Broken Tooth. Yeah, whenever you fight elites. But that also works in shops as well, right? And it also just works in... Uh, it works for the Augmenter event because that's treated as an elite fight. It's like, oh, Living Wall. Would you like to remove Transformer Upgraded Card? Or fight all three heads and do all of those things. Like... In one floor in this, uh, you know, in this mod, one floor can give you more value than an elite fight. <laughs> I think that's crazy. Of course, that could happen in the base game too. But, man, transform three and get a curse? Like, <laughs> oh, it's normality. Oh, no. I mean, we could just exhaust it. This is not just the ironclad thing either because so many downfall characters have a way to exhaust stuff right oh yeah and we had that too in any case man it's tough because i love downfall and i liked making content for it i really think that downfall would be the way to um keep this game breathing for as long as possible right the game still has a really good player base like on steam and on console too the game is still very very popular it's like no less popular than it used to be for the most part if i recall correctly last time i looked at the steam charts numbers they've remained steady and it's like i feel like this mod could absolutely breathe life into slay the spire especially with all the characters but you win a couple of times and then it's just not novel anymore. The runs take longer and anything you do is good for you. So, um, it's not a whole lot of challenge, really. And if there is a challenge, then it's going to be because you died to something like, I don't know, Watcher just one-shotting you or like, Neo making your whole hand ethereal or drawing two bewildered at the same time they have to play one and then the other one randomizes the cost of all your cards to be three like these are patterns that are recognizable when you play downfall because they're the only ways that you could lose really <laughs> like or ironclad one gives you a stupid amount of statuses and you die that way you path two aggressively in act one show up at the act one boss with not enough hp to win the fight like, that's how you would lose. Aside from that, nothing's going to stop you. And the run is going to take longer. So I'm playing a run for a longer amount of time that I know there's no encounter in the game that can stop. There's an aspect of this mod that's like that. <laughs>